All right, welcome to the first of its kind, World Changing Manufacturers Network. Lisa Ryan has her ears to the ground and her heart in the game. Get ongoing education and new connections right here with Lisa and the Manufacturers Network. Buckle your seat, listen, and spread the word. Here is Lisa. Hey, it's Lisa Ryan, and welcome to the Manufacturers Network podcast. I'm excited to introduce you to our guest today, Susan Frew. As the daughter of a carpenter and the wife of a master plumber, Susan Frew used her business coaching experience, having coached over 10,000 hours, 18 different trades, and 150 companies. The Frews grew Sunshine Plumbing, Heating, and Air 535% in one year and made the elusive Inc. 5000 list in 2019, along with 43 other awards and accolades. Susan has made it her life's work to help other businesses to thrive and avoid catastrophe. Susan is a certified business coach, Fix This Next Advisor, and a profit first professional. Susan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Lisa. I'm honored to be here. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Well, Susan, share with us a little bit about your background and really what led you to what you're doing today. Well, it was a sort of a roundabout way. I started in telecom. I grew up on the East Coast and I was in New York City working for AT&T Wireless and I got transferred to Denver. I ultimately ended up getting transferred to the Caribbean for two years. And when that assignment ended, I decided to come back to Colorado and I bought a business coaching franchise. And I started my business coaching franchise up in the mountains of Colorado in beautiful Breckenridge, where many people listening would know where that is. It's a beautiful place to ski with your family. And during that journey, I met my husband and he was a plumber. And oddly, and I don't know if this was because I was born the daughter of a carpenter or not, but I ended up coaching all these tradespeople. Like now I'm up to 19 different trades that I've coached. And I met my husband through that experience. And then we moved down to Denver shortly after the recession and started Sunshine Plumbing, Heating, Air. And we went into service because we felt it was recession proof that no matter what happens in the economy, you're not going to live without heat, hot water, a working toilet. So we sort of thought we had a good niche and uh, we moved and went into business against 950 competitors. Wow. So that's the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and I know you and I had a conversation about employees. I mean, a lot of times on the Manufacturers Network podcast, we're really talking about workplace culture and keeping your top talent from becoming someone else's because it is so difficult to find people. But from your tale of finding the wrong person, you really do have to be careful to make sure that you're spending the time, you're spending the effort to get the right person on. So, ooh, people are really like, what's going on with that? Are you on the edge of your seat? <laughs> yeah. But, but so he, tell here's, us what happened. So here's our story. Uh, we, you know, I really consider myself a speaker and a business coach. And here we were running the company. We grew it extremely fast. We've, you know, went from zero to $3 million in no time flat and had a lot of interest. And during that time, I really felt that I needed to hire a full-time bookkeeper slash office manager. So I could go out and do more speeches on how we grew our company. So in a very disorganized way, I dumped all of my responsibilities on my office manager. And I went out and fulfilled my ego dream of speaking all over the country. Meanwhile, my employee back home really was not doing the right and ethical thing by our company. And part of it was a little theft mixed in with a little con, <laughs> mixed in with a little larceny, ended our company in a million dollars in debt. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so how did she get, you know, from, again, you think that you're paying attention to the books or whatever, but it seemed like it was a really short period of time that all of this happened. I mean, how was she able to get away with it? 
Well, I thought I had a good handle on this because, you know, I know how to read financial reports. I was a business coach. I taught financials for dummies. That was one of my programs. And I would ask questions about certain things and she would give me some off the cuff answer. But what I had done is I set up this program for her where she would get a bonus if she could stay on budget every single month. And the bonus was significant. It could be up to $1,500 a month. And she had kept asking me for a raise. And I was like, you know, I can't afford it. But if you can stay on budget, we can afford to do this. But there, and there were some red flags in there. There was quite a few, but some of them, if you're listening to this, if your employee is visibly living above their means, you need to question that because this employee took family of five to Cancun for a week, all inclusive resort. How that is an incredibly expensive vacation. And they were making, you know, pretty minimum wages. The rest of her family, like she was doing pretty well, but they had all kinds of debt they were carrying around. So that was something. And just the way she spent money and, you know, sort of spent our money too. And that's why I was trying to keep her on budget. So what she did was she would short our bills. So not not pay them, she would pay a portion of them so that red flags wouldn't be waived. And she did that with our payroll taxes primarily. So if we owed 5,000 on Friday, she'd pay four. She, we owed 4,000, she'd pay three so that her budget numbers would look right. And I would sign the form and we'd send in the check. And in my mind, everything was copacetic. But what she didn't realize was at the end of the year, when and the W-2s trued up, the IRS would catch her. So it was about an 18-month cycle by the time the letter started coming to my home. And I was here on a Saturday doing housework, you know, just hanging out on a Saturday, doorbell rings, mailman, open the letter, IRS, right? Nobody likes getting a certified letter from the IRS, but it was for $498,000, <laughs> oh, that does not make your day. You know, I'm still convinced, Lisa, that the IRS sends those letters on Saturday to ruin your weekend because <laughs> there's nothing you can do. Like what you can't call anyone. You have to wait until Monday. And of course, that's their busiest day. So getting through to anyone. But what it was, was penalties and interest for all of those quarters that she had shorted the payroll and then come to find out that she, we owed our vendors 175,000 on top of that. And I was fined what's known as a trust fund penalty for not being a good steward of those payroll taxes and allowing my employee not to submit in an appropriate way. Now, in my mind, they were correct. That's why my signature was on there. So the IRS doesn't really care what your story is. If your signature's on there, it's your problem. So that's how we got a million dollars in. And it was a painful couple of years. Right. Wow. So what were some of the, the lessons that you learned throughout this? And I'm sure that there were plenty, but as you share with your audiences and you share your story, what do you share about things that they can look for, things that they can do so that this doesn't happen to them? Well, first thing, don't buy into your own media and your own PR because I was so high on the fact that, you know, we were becoming these big celebrities for growing our company and winning all these awards. And I'm traveling all over the country, giving these big keynotes that I wasn't watching what I was doing. And, and it turned into a horrible situation for me because I was up there telling stories of how successful we were. And once I found out what had happened, I became a fraud in my mind. And I couldn't deliver those keynotes anymore. And I would get down off stage and I would feel terrible. So that's number one, don't buy your own PR because you need to pay attention to what's going on, no matter how big your britches get. Uh, secondly, get your own mail. And I don't care how important you are, how busy you need to get your own mail because there is information in there. And that goes for your electronic mail too. So now I have an email address called accounting at sunshineplumbingheating.com. Only me has access to that. And so if I'm on the road, wherever I am, I can see it. 
With regard to the mail, it goes to a PO box. I can have it, if I'm gonna be gone for longer than a couple of days, they will scan it and send it to me. But I normally will go there on the weekend, pick it up and I see what's happening. You learn a lot from your mail in a business. And third thing, Lisa, is do two different kinds of background checks. Now, there's a regular background check, which is going to, you know, check the motor vehicle background, felonies, that type of thing. But there's a second layer to that that most people are not aware of. It's called civil penalties. An attorney can run that. There are services out there that you can buy. I use a service that's $29 a month. And it shows you things that are non-criminal that will give you a clue that this may not be a good hire for you, especially if you're putting them in charge of finances. Because I found once I did pull those records, she had filed for bankruptcy three times. She had liens, garnishments, judgments, like judgments from my competitors, (laughs) that they were suing her because she stole money from them. And because of all those liens and garnishments, her and her husband weren't taking home very much money. So that prompted them to do a lot of the things that they did. And they would do things like go down to our tire store and buy a set of tires for all of their cars and charge them to our truck account because we have 10 trucks on the road, right? They stole a gas card and they would fill up all of their cars on a Friday afternoon. For two years, they did that. It was her job to review the gas bill. So that's how she got away with that one. So all of these things, now I have checks and balances in every area of our company, but I I was asleep at the wheel. So I take responsibility for what happened. Such a good lesson learned. And I know the other thing that we were also talking about is the difficulty it is in finding people. Now, mind you, that that it is really, really important that you really check out the people that you have, particularly if they're in charge of your finances. Mm -hmm. But tell us about some of the things that you have done to try to woo people to work for Sunshine Plumbing and some of the things that have worked that aren't working? You know, what are you finding out there? Well, in the beginning, uh, one of the things that we did is, you know, we did a lot of advertising using Facebook. You know, we were really creative and kind of funny with our ads. And we used all those awards I was talking about because we had won best workplaces from Inc. Magazine and from some local places. So we used all of that. And we always had a sign-on bonus and we always broke it out in quarters, right? So if you stay with us for 90 days, six months, nine months, 12 months, you get you get a bonus from us. We would try to make your experience here unique and different. We celebrated birthdays. We don't do on call. We do not do nights and weekends. Weird for a plumbing and heating company, but our employees were that important to us. If we had clients who had a problem, we would put them in a hotel rather than call one of our guys out in the middle of the night. So that we thought that was really unique. Uh, we paid vacation, unlimited personal time off. You could win points for getting reviews and the grand prize for getting reviews, good reviews out there from clients trip to Mexico for two. Wow. So we did all kinds of things, great creative things. And then this market started getting harder and harder and harder. And our top competitor in the market, as I said earlier, there's 950 competitors in this space in Colorado. They were offering a $10,000 sign-on bonus, which I thought was outrageous. And I even did a TED talk about why can't we get women in the trades, which we've always been looking for more women in the trades. We never seem to find that many of them. So we thought that $10,000 was crazy. We are now offering $10,000 sign-on bonus, Lisa, and no one is applying. Wow. Nobody. So I don't know what our future is, but what we, we just did, we are merging with one of our subcontractors. So we joined forces. They're struggling because they don't have good back-end administration. We're struggling because we don't have workers. And so we are going to come together. We're, we've formed a partnership agreement to work out of the same shop. We are, we are sharing resources and they're coming aboard with a group of employees. So that's 
really been my solution. I've been trying to buy other companies or find strategic partnerships like that because, you know, until I believe this market's going to turn around this fall, that is my hope. I think that that's, we have to be really creative. Obviously, people were working before. So have they just left the industry maybe because of the pandemic and they just totally got burned out? Or are there not enough new people coming into the industry? Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. It's all of it. Um, Well, I mean, as we know, the baby boomers are aging out. There's over a million person works work shortage and they call it blue collar trades. And you can list all of that out. It's probably much more than that because, you know, all the parents over the last 20 years pushed everybody to go to college, whether you were college material or not. So what we see actually in the trade schools now is people that are a little older, like they, they tried the college route and that didn't really work for them because they're hands-on folks and they want to go and get jobs with their hands. So we're seeing like 30 ish people going to trade school now, which is great. Right. But it's been faltering for 20 years. So now we have this big giant gap. So that's one of the things that's happening. The pandemic and the stipends on the unemployment for those jobs that are in that 20 to probably $30 per hour range, which is where a lot of manufacturing jobs and uh, trades jobs fit, you know, if you, if you do the math on the unemployment, you can get pretty close to what your salary was. And in plumbing, you can do side work. I can put in water heaters all day long in my neighborhood and make some money in my pocket that nobody needs to know about. I can go to Home Depot and buy the stuff and, hey, am I licensed or insured? Ah, Probably not, but you know, my neighbor's happy. I made a few bucks. And then of course there's childcare issues right? When the kids weren't in school and, you know, someone needs to stay home with them and how do we manage that? So it's a perfect storm of things that are happening in the trades and in manufacturing and in factories all over the country. So many industries have been touched by this. So that's, you know, and and also our guys go into your house. So how do I know you're not telling me, you're not telling me a story that you're healthy? Right, exactly. Well, and we no- do know that hopefully as the all the extended unemployment finally comes to an end this fall mm-hmm. for people that we will start seeing more people going on. So let's go back to the happier side of business, the <laughs> things that the things that caused you to be, you know, a bl- best place to work and that you grew your company because it did sound like you did some super cool things for your employees. So if somebody listening to this today is, is thinking about ideas or needing ideas and suggestions so that they can keep their employees, what are some of the creative things that you, some of the other creative things that you did there? Well, I mentioned, but I didn't elaborate on the unlimited personal time off. Now that's not paid right now. That would be cost prohibitive for mostly all of us. But what we did is we said with proper notice, if you want to take an extended period off, let we had an employee had always had a dream to go hunting in Canada with his son. And he was getting a little older. The son was starting to have children. And he's like, if we don't do this now, we're probably never going to do it. And we gave him a month off. And he never forgot that we did that. And, you know, if you need a day to go, whatever it is that you need to do, we will work with you with unlimited personal time off. You would think that people would take advantage of that. They really don't. It's just something that they really liked that we offered it. We also offered a gym membership. Now everyone thinks that's a great thing. Does everybody use it? No, but it was something. We always make sure we recognize people's birthdays and anniversaries. So that's something that we do. We have in the past and from time to time sent flowers home to someone's spouse, or we've sent people out to dinner. We've sent employees on a trip, or uh, we sent one employee to see his friend, his friend was passing away and he 
wanted to say goodbye to him before he went. So we used some of our points and miles and sent them on a trip. So Mm -hmm. that's a lot of things that, you know, we have done just really trying to be outside the box. So as we are getting to the end of our time together, I I know you speak to audiences and you do coaching. Share with us a little bit about, you know, what you do and how you work with your clients. And then if somebody would like to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, in the middle of our drama, and I need to, I need to not leave everyone hanging here. We did pay (laughs) off. Okay. So this, this is how we got out of the debt. We did a little smush of Dave Ramsey along with Profit First. And uh, if you've not read Profit First, you should probably pick up a copy or, or download it. It's a, great, it's a great premise. But we started doing those two things. Now, we also have this big, giant shop on the highway with the lighted sign. It fabulous, 5,000 square feet inside. I mean, this huge building and it cost a fortune. So we shut down the big building. We moved the offices into the basement of my house. How humiliating is that for the big lady on the keynote stage talking about how great they were? We got a little shop down closer to the city. And for the last two years, uh, we dug and dug and dug and dug and dug. And last weekend, they moved out of the basement into another shop with an office. And uh, we have effectively paid off uh, over $600,000. Some of the the debt that we have is for our trucks. So I'm not really counting that as too much debt. And the rest of this stuff, we will be completely debt-free by the middle of 2022. Wow. Uh, So it took a lot of sacrifice, a lot of hard work, a lot of elbow grease by all of us. But what I do now, Lisa, so all those years of coaching about how great we were and how you could get there, you know what? So what? Who cares, lady? What people want to hear is, hey, how can you help me to get out of my predicament? And that's what I do now. So I work, I partnered with a business brokerage firm called Greencatcher, and I'm on staff with them as their professional speaker, and I run their business coaching division. So what we do is we work with business owners who want to sell their companies. So they might not want to sell for three to five years, but we start to help them to get prepared. So there's my division, which is coaching, and then we have brokerage. So what happens is if a company is not ready to sell, but they need some structural changes or increase in profits to get to the right number, they send them over to my department. And then I work with them until they're ready. And then they go to brokerage and they, they sell and off they go into the sunset um, with their retirement funds. So that's what I do now. It's, it's really fun. And I now, my story on stage is a lot different. It is a, uh, Hey, Anybody can get in this predicament. There's a way out. Just let's breathe, right? Uh, I know sleeping is difficult when you don't know how you're going to make payroll next week. I've been there um, many, many times and I get it. And uh, I think that I'm a lot more helpful now (laughs) than I've ever been. Uh, But the best way to reach me is on LinkedIn. And my moniker on there, Susan Coaches. It's been like that for a long time. And my last name is Frew, F-R-E-W. Susan Frew, I'm in Commerce City, Colorado. You see me out there, uh, but definitely hit me up. Or if you're going to be at Fav Tech, come and see me because I will be there. I'm speaking in two sessions and we have a booth for three and catcher. So I love to see you there. Yes. And I will be speaking there too. So it'll be fun to hang out together. Yes, Absolutely. Well, Susan, it has been a pleasure to have a conversation with you. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you. It's been my honor, Lisa, and I look forward to spending time with you in Chicago. Great. I'm Lisa Ryan, and this is the Manufacturers Network Podcast. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Hey, do me a favor. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe and give us a five-star rating. Also, feel free to share the podcast with your friends and colleagues so we can grow the network and connect more fantastic folks just like you. You can either go to the website at manufacturers-network.com or share the podcast on your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or wherever you and your industry friends hang out. 
The bigger and faster we grow this network, the stronger and deeper community we will have. I appreciate you. Thank you.